to Coach Lawrence Cole, uh, the head football coach at Tennessee State University. And Coach Cole, before we had our first commercial break, we were talking about some of the things that, uh, you were inv that you've been involved in uh, since uh, you uh, graduated from uh, Nebraska, since you played your uh, college career in Nebraska. Let's uh, talk about uh, you coming to Tennessee State University. I think uh, it uh, is widely known that uh, you are, quote, the man with a plan. And I think that that's true in the sense that you brought uh, with you some information as to how you plan on uh, bringing the uh, Tennessee State University football team back to glory. But before we get into that plan, let's talk, give you an opportunity to say something about uh, your impressions of Tennessee State University before you uh, took on this job. Uh, I, you, know, uh, you know, I grew up with teachers at my high school from Tennessee State, so I heard about the tradition about Tennessee State for a long, long time because they used to play Central State University. So mm -hmm. I heard about it and heard about all the good players and some of the, you know, the legendary great coaches that came through here. Uh, but what I've been impressed with is so far is it's just so many alumni around here that that's so powerful. You know, you go to different places uh, all over the United States. That there's Tennessee graduates all over the place. And, uh, you know, I've been real, real, real pleased with a lot of the people here. Mm -hmm. Now, what about your plan? I mean, uh, uh, give us some information as to, uh, I think you've already indicated that Tennessee State University's football program has been sort of on the downslide for the last many years. And uh, according to the information that's circulated in the press and uh, through uh, uh, conversations and whatnot, you do have a plan. And I'm sure that most people are not familiar with that plan. So share some of that plan with us this morning. Well, basically my plan right now, I think when any program is kind of disrupted a little bit, been down like that, I think you have to look at the, look inside and look at the players. And I think right now we got to get our players believing, you know, in this universe and believing in themselves. And, you know, when they believe in themselves, they bring a unity together. Right now, I think what happened is everything is just kind of like divided. Mm -hmm. But that's what I got to bring back together. And that's what I talked about when I first came here. I think the education part is the most important part that I have to get these young men to understand that why they're here at Tennessee State. And mm -hmm. they got to think about all the, the, the great people that don't graduate from here in Tennessee mm -hmm. State that's in the public out here teaching schools and mm -hmm. uh, uh, on TV programs and all over the country. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have five things what I tell our players that I want them to believe in. And I think if they believe in that, what I'm telling them, I think this will help our program turn around. And the five things I talk about all the time, I tell those guys, number one, their faith is number one in their life. Mm -hmm. And I believe if they believe in that, and I tell you what, I think we're on the right track. Number two is their family. Those are the people that's going to be by them. Don't always think your friend's going to be by you mm -hmm. when times get rough. Mm -hmm. Number three is their education. That's why they're here at Tennessee State. Number four is that athletic ability that God gave them. Number mm -hmm. five is their social life. And I'm not a big guy on social life because mm -hmm. I tell those young men that, hey, they can go right outside and you probably can talk to a squirrel. You can mm -hmm. talk to a tree. That'll talk back to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I want those guys to understand the five things, and I think if they take those five things and then look at those five things every morning, and I'll just go over them. I always have to repeat them to mm -hmm. them all the time, and I say, hey, their faith, mm -hmm. their family, their education, mm -hmm. their social life, I mean, their um, athletic ability and their social mm -hmm. life, they keep them like that, and we'll be all right. Mm -hmm. But what happens to a lot of young men today and what don't probably happen in the team is that they're taking the social life and they're trying to move it up in front of here, here, mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and it don't work that way. So they got to keep those five perspective things mm -hmm. in life, and I think the program will go in the right direction. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are things I'm working with our guys with right now just to get mm -hmm. this program in track. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, I, I got them in the academics. I got them in study hall. So, you know, mm -hmm. we put in a lot of time in study hall. We go from Monday to Thursday from 2 to 9, and then mm -hmm. we're, you know, we got a room over there in Gentry mm -hmm. that, uh, I put them in right there, and then mm -hmm. when the coaches are doing the monitoring of the study hall. Mm -hmm. Also, I have worked with the university as, you know, getting tutors for them, providing mm -hmm. people if they need extra help in any types of studies. Mm -hmm. So we do have that in place right now. So we have the academics in place, mm -hmm. and right now we just got to get the football in place. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what we're working on right now. Mm -hmm. And then as far as weight training, we weight train every day. And right now we're doing our conditioning, which is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock in the morning. So I'm making them make a commitment to themselves, too, because mm -hmm. I think if any young man commits himself mm -hmm. to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, go running and jumping and doing all that and got me screaming at them and, mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. I think they're committed to this mm -hmm. program, and then we'll get this program right mm -hmm. back on track. You know, it's, it's interesting that uh, you mentioned uh, that education is one of the third, I think the third point that you're talking about. 
And uh, one of the real problems I think that uh, we've had in college athletics, uh, period, not only at Tennessee State University, historically black institutions, but this whole question of attrition, uh, the ability of uh, some of these young men to graduate, and et cetera. Right. And I think that uh, what uh, you're indicating here is that uh, you recognize that and that you're early trying to do something in order to make sure that not only are these young men successful on the playing field, but you're also trying to make sure that they are successful academically so that they might be able to move beyond right. Tennessee State University with a degree. And I think you're to be applauded for that. But now let's look at uh, some of the things in terms of recruiting these young people, right. uh, and, and especially the NCAA requirements in terms of have, have, have you had an opportunity to get out into the community? And what have you found uh, in reference to some of the people that you're talking to now? Well, you know, when I first came here, that's the first thing I did. I hit the trail on, uh, you know, trying to recruit here in the, in, in the city area here uh, at some of the high schools because, you know, we only had like two weeks to recruit. So, you know, we was way, way, way behind the eight ball because, you know, right now recruiting has already started already for the next recruiting. But once I got in the, in the public out there and just started going to the, the schools and just started talking to some of the professors, teachers I've been running into, mm -hmm. you know, they, they talked about the, uh, the academic part. Right now, you know, with the NCAA, with all these new rules and they're changing every mm -hmm. year so the kids got to be adjusted to that right now and that's what's hurting a lot of the inner city kids because mm -hmm. of all the new rules you know you have the 2.0 you got to have a thousand you got a 2.5 you got to have 920 mm -hmm. so it fluctuate with your grade point average right now mm -hmm. but uh, <clears throat> that's why it's important that uh, we get out early mm -hmm. you know recruiting get out early so you can just kind of weed those weed those people out and mm -hmm. you don't have that problem in college you mm -hmm. recruit the guy that really want to come to school and get education mm -hmm. that's what i'm looking for because i'm a big believer in this mm -hmm. and i say you know in, in my plan when i came here about mental mental errors i talk mm -hmm. about our kids that all the time because mm -hmm. if our kids are a failure in the classroom they'll be a failure on the field mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's what i look at i think if the kid want education mm -hmm. and they're good in the classroom then they'll be good on the field mm -hmm. and, and that's and i'm a firm believer in that mm -hmm. and uh, that's the kind of kid we're looking for. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a kid that has a foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, I will go to every kid at home that we, re we recruit mm -hmm. to uh, see what his support system is, because I mm -hmm. think it's very important that the mother, the father, mm -hmm. or the grandmother, whoever raising that kid, mm -hmm. is kind of supporting that kid. And, and, and that's a big factor in, in this today's mm -hmm. young kid today, is that a lot of kids are coming from single parent homes and not getting a mm -hmm. push from the back. So I think it's important that I get out there meet those type of people mm -hmm. uh one of the things i'm doing right now too in nashville right now we call it the tiger rap and i'll tell you what we'll uh, continue that after this uh, commercial break and we'll talk about that we'll be back with you following this commercial break <laughs> 